For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome back to Around the World in 8 Minutes, where we at People's Dispatch bring you stories of struggle and resistance from across the globe of people who, despite all odds, continue fighting for change and a dignified life for all. For our first story, we take it to Sudan, where the Trade Union Coalition, the Sudanese Professionals Association, has launched a campaign to dissolve the notorious government-backed militia, the Rapid Support Forces, RSF. Their campaign against the RSF, called Know Your Right, was launched following the torture and killing of yet another young activist in the country, Bahaldin Nouri. According to sources, Nouri was abducted from a busy marketplace near his house in southern Khartoum, by civilian clothes armed personnel of the RSF's intelligence department on December 21st. He was forced onto a pickup truck with no license plate and subsequently held at a detention center in the capital's twin city, Umdurman. The day following his kidnapping, Nuri's family, which had already filed a complaint with the local police, was informed by an unidentified caller that his body was at the Umdurman teaching hospital. According to the family, there were signs of torture on the body. Protests broke out following Nouri's disappearance and assassination. On December 27th, RSF spokesperson Jamal Duma accepted the responsibility of the RSF and the crime and announced that those involved had been taken in for interrogation. The Sudanese Professionals Association, which led the December 2018 revolution that successfully ousted Sudanese dictator Omar al-Bashir in 2019, has demanded that all those involved in the kidnapping and murder of Nouri be charged and has demanded systematic efforts to eliminate the RSF. The RSF, formed in 2013, has been involved in countless mass human rights violations. Following the formation of the transitional government in August 2019, the RSF was incorporated into the military, but not dissolved. The Sudanese Professionals Association has also demanded that the individual members of the RSF who qualify to be in the armed forces should be integrated into the army, while others should be disarmed and dismissed. In addition, all RSF detention centers in the country must be identified and shut down permanently. They've also called on officials to review past violations of the RSF. For our next story, we take you to Ireland, where people have been protesting for the past week following the brutal killing of George Nkencho at the hands of the police. Nkencho, a black man of Nigerian origin, was murdered by Irish police, the Gardai, outside his family home on December 30th, following an altercation in a local supermarket. Following the incident in the supermarket, wherein he reportedly argued with the cashier and showed that he had a knife on him, he walked to his family home in Clonie, a town on the outskirts of Dublin. According to Nkencho's family, when he arrived home from the market, several members of the Gardai were already outside his home, and when he tried to go inside, they opened fire and killed him. What do we want? According to family members, Nkencho suffered from mental health problems. His family has condemned the brutal murder that occurred while his three siblings were meters away inside the house. The incident has been denounced by progressive and anti-racist groups across Ireland who have highlighted that it is a clear example of the deep racism that exists within the Gardai, other institutions, and Irish society. His family also denounced what they called a vile character assassination on social media, wherein false information was spread about George, attempting to paint him as a violent criminal. Several accounts falsely claimed that Nkencho had been convicted in several criminal cases, but Irish media house The Independent debunked this fake news and had confirmed that he had no prior criminal convictions. Organizations in Ireland, such as the Connolly Youth Movement, Migrants and Ethnic Minorities for Reproductive Justice, and others, have vowed to remain on the streets to demand that the killer cops are brought to justice and that serious measures be taken to combat racist police violence in the country. For our last story, we take you to the Philippines, where lawmakers and the House of Representatives have called for a congressional inquiry into the recent mass killings of indigenous peoples in a raid by the security forces. On December 30th, police and military carried out a raid across 16 villages in the Capiz and Iloilo provinces 
during which they killed nine indigenous leaders of the Tumando community. An additional 18 members of the community were arrested in the operation. Among those murdered in the raid was Roy Giganto, chairperson of the community organization Tumanduk, as well as other local councillors and activists. The Anti-Communist National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict, formed by an executive order from President Duterte in 2018, has allegedly red-tagged the victims. Red-tagging is a practice employed by the Filipino state wherein critics are persecuted in various ways and even killed under the pretext of belonging to the banned Communist Party of the Philippines. Legislators of the left-wing Makabayan bloc, who moved House Resolution No. 1449, calling for the inquiry, also released a statement calling the murders highly alarming. They wrote, The brazen killing of the poor and marginalized indigenous peoples is an indicator of the state of human rights in the country, as well as the raging impunity that seems to reign over our land. The lawmakers also stated in a press conference that the victims were well-known indigenous leaders in their respective districts. They were consistent in opposing militarization and rights violations in their communities. That's all we have time for. Keep watching People's Dispatch.